Hello, I'm going to explain the circle of life. No, not the one from The Lion King. I'm talking about the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is step two of cellular respiration. Step one was glycolysis, which broke down one glucose molecule into two pyruvate molecules. Between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, pyruvate was oxidized into acetyl coenzyme A. But you might be asking, What's oxidation? In general, oxidation is taking electrons from one molecule and then bonding them to another. Just think of Robin Hood, stealing electrons from the rich molecules and then giving them to the poor. But let's go back to the Krebs cycle. In step one, acetyl coenzyme A enters the mitochondrial matrix where the Krebs cycle takes place. It bonds to oxaloacetate, which was already in the Krebs cycle, to form a super molecule called citrate. In step two, water transforms citrate into its isomer called isocitrate. Now think of isocitrate as the king, and these guys over here are the starving paupers who want his electrons. In step three, our first peasant named NAD comes in and oxidizes isocitrate, taking two of his electrons. After he loses CO2, he becomes alpha ketoglutarate. In step four, another NAD comes in and oxidizes him, taking two more of his electrons. After losing a CO2 molecule, coenzyme A from earlier comes and bonds to him, forming succinyl coenzyme A. But in step five, eliminating another extroverted phosphate is not pleased with his arrangement. So he comes in and knocks the coenzyme A off, forming succinate. Phosphate then bonds to GDP, which makes GTP, which later becomes ATP for the cell. In step six, succinate comes under attack by an electron-hungry warmonger named FAD. Not only does FAD take two electrons, but also two protons with him, forming a very furious fumarate molecule. In step seven, fumarate takes in a water to regain those electrons, forming malate immediately to lose those to another NAD, forming the less wealthy oxaloacetate from earlier. So what's the point of all this? The answer is the electron transport chain. Here's how it works. FAD and NAD take their electrons over to the electron transport chain. These proteins then actively pump the electrons into the intermembrane space. Because of the high electron concentration, the electrons naturally flow back into the mitochondrial matrix. But the only way they can get there is through the ATP synthase. This is important because the ATP synthase is responsible for forming the majority of ATP in cellular respiration. But the only way it works is if these electrons are flowing through it. If we didn't have these electrons out here, there would be no way for the ATP synthase to run, which means that the cell would die. But because our peasants were victorious, he got their electrons over to the ETC, the circle of life continues.